So over the past 10 years, I've experimented a lot with intermittent fasting, which can be super awesome. I've also experimented a lot with the one meal a day diet type of situation, which has a lot of benefits and can be awesome too. But what I've found personally for me is that too mad, two meals a day dieting actually is the most sustainable and works really, really awesome in terms of hormonal health, gut health, and skin health. What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart. I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. You guys heard it in the intro. I'm gonna be giving you guys some background and reasons why 2MAD has worked so good for me and why I prefer to do that as my sustainable on a daily basis type of dietary style. Traditional intermittent fasting I think is an absolutely awesome way to go about trying to heal your gut, trying to figure out your diet, trying to get your hormones back on track. I have used it extensively in the past and I still use it from time to time. The problem though with intermittent fasting for myself personally is sometimes the feeding window tends to be a little bit strange for meal timing and meal prep with my workouts. Here's what I mean. If my eating window goes from two in the afternoon to six at night, let's say, or from four in the afternoon to eight o'clock at night, I generally do my workouts first thing in the morning. And I know not everyone will have this problem, but if I do a fasted workout in the morning and then directly after my workout don't eat until eight hours later, I'm not giving my body the protein and nutrients it needs to use that workout to build muscle and to digest food and to assimilate nutrients. I'm just kind of fasting away my gains. Now I know this can be easily solved by pushing my feeding window to just directly after my workouts and I've tried that in the past but what I found is when I do that then at night I'm pretty hungry before bed and if I'm starving before bed I just do not sleep good in any way shape or form. I'll let those cops in the ambulance drive by before I keep shooting. When my workouts are later in the afternoon closer to my feeding window. I have found intermittent fasting, just the traditional way of doing it, to be a pretty darn good way of eating. OMAD, on the other hand, I think is also awesome to have all of your calories in one meal and to spend that much time, 22 hours, 23 hours for some people, 20 hours in an entire day fasting and letting your body go through autophagy and giving it a break from digesting food can be super beneficial. The problem that I find with OMAD when I try to do it on a regular basis is the same issue I had with intermittent fasting. If I'm gonna OMAD, I'm gonna do my OMAD at the nighttime because if I don't, I won't sleep at all. And so that means if I have my workout from anywhere in the morning hours, which I normally do, all the way to the mid afternoon, it's a long time before I'm gonna feed my body the nourishment it wants and needs after workout. Also, when I do OMAD, the problem that always comes up for me is twofold. One, it's almost impossible for me to eat enough calories. I need somewhere between 2,000 minimum and almost 3,000 calories a day to keep me where I wanna be. For me, that's just an unrealistic expectation for one single meal. I eat a very high fat, high protein, nutrient dense type of animal based carnivore-ish eating style, it satiates you really fast. It fills you up really fast. And I don't really like pushing beyond the point when I feel comfortable and satiated each meal. So with OMAD, a lot of times I'm either left feeling way too stuffed from the big meal, two, I can't get enough calories in that meal, or three, it's just not good timing with my movement and my workout sessions. But again, OMAD, can work really good for a lot of people. And in spurts, I really do like to use it. Now, two mad on the other hand, two meals a day dieting for me is the easiest one to sustain. And I get most or all of the benefits anyway that you get from intermittent fasting or OMADing. Two mad allows me to either have a little bit of calories in the morning, which makes my workout good and it gives me some protein to use after my workout and then I do a big gap and eat at night so that it takes care of the nighttime hunger and fully fills my body up with the nutrients it needs. Plus, I don't really then have to have a 2,000 calorie meal. I can break my calories up into two meals, making it a lot easier and better for me personally with my digestion. So it kind of gives me the best of both worlds and I kind of do it in two different ways. 
Way number one is the way I kind of already mentioned is I'll have a breakfast, then I'll have my workout, then I'll have a nice big gap, and then I'll have my dinner. And what this allows me to do is have fuel for my workout with a little bit of leftover calories to aid in their recovery. And then I have a nice big gap of not eating and I get all of my nutrients in my last meal. Again, this gives me the best of both worlds because I don't have to consume all of my calories in one big meal. It's a smaller meal in the morning and then a bigger meal at night, which is super easy for me to get enough calories without messing up my digestion. I know what you might be thinking is, well, if you eat breakfast and then work out and then have a gap, you're still not nourishing your body directly after a workout. But in most evidence-based circles, what we're starting to find is that even if you're not eating directly after a workout, but you have the protein available from a previous meal that was pretty close to your workout, you're gonna be able to utilize that protein for nourishment, for building muscle, and for all that good stuff. So maybe that's what's going on, but so far the results have been really good compared to when I OMAD or intermittent fast as far as muscle retention and body composition. The second way that I too mad is I simply wake up early in the morning, I get my workout done, I knock it out of the ballpark, and then I have a good size meal right off the bat. Then I'll fast and let food digest for six to 10 more hours, then have another meal at nighttime, and then a couple hours later go to bed. And again, this is a super easy and comfortable way for me to have nice big gaps in my digestion where I'm not actually digesting food and allowing food to fully digest before I take in my first meal. And it breaks up my calorie intake so that both meals are are big and lovely and delicious, but I don't have to stress to try to eat more than I want to. When I'm satiated, I'm done eating and that's it. Once I get hungry later on, I eat again and when I'm satiated, I stop. That mechanism for me is one of the keys that I found personally allows me to stay on the leaner side year round. When I too mad, I don't really have to calorie count and I end up being slightly under maintenance in a very comfortable way with plenty of fat and plenty of protein. So it's kind of the best of both worlds for me. So the take home in today's video is for me personally, I found that too mad just is a more sustainable way of eating. There are tons of benefits to intermittent fasting, but I do have some issues with them personally. There are, some, there are a ton of benefits from OMADing, but for me eating that huge meal and trying to get all of my calories right before bed doesn't really help my sleep and it stresses me out trying to get all my calories in one single meal. What's been giving you guys the best results in terms of strength, hormones, body composition, gut health, and skin health? Leave comments down below. So that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Remember to subscribe and share. Leave your comments and questions down below. Hit the notification bell. For those of you who are looking to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there are links in the description box for all of my offerings one-on-one -on -one coaching, the three phases workbook, and Skinessa, which is the best probiotic for skin health and gut health on the market. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll be back with many more videos really soon. Peace.